Hello and welcome to the video solution of the exercise problem Shubnikov that has effect. In this problem we're going to tackle the experimental the experimentally relevant task of calculating the density and the mobility of a two-dimensional electron gas. Um, the two-dimensional electron gas is characterized using a whole bar geometry at a temperature of 2.3 Kelvin. The whole bar geometry depicted here shows the measurement test setup. So a current I is passed from this contact of the whole bar to this other contact which is grounded. And simultaneously a magnetic field is applied perpendicular to the plane of the electron gas and the two voltages Ux, which is the longitudinal voltage, and Uy, which is the hull voltage, are measured in the fashion depicted here. W is the width of the hull bar, and L is the distance between the centers of the contacts of the two contacts along the same edge. What we want to do is um, using the measurements um, obtained in such a geometry, namely rho xy and rho xx, we want to use these this data to um, as already mentioned, to characterize the two-dimensional electron gas. Now, the first um, part of the exercise problem concerns the determination of the longitudinal resistivity rho xx and the whole resistivity rho xy from the me measured values of ux, uy, and i. And the answer here is rather simple, namely, the Hall resistivity, rho xy, is just given by the Hall resistance, or just by uy divided by the current flowing through the Hall bar, i, whereas rho xx, the longitudinal resistivity, is given by the geometric ratio of w over l multiplied by the longitudinal resistance, which is ux, divided by i. So what this means is that independent of the width or the length of the whole bar, the voltage, the whole voltage uy um, is always the same, whereas the voltage measured along these, um, the voltage ux, which is measured here along the length of the bar, um, is directly proportional to the width W um, is in, I'm sorry it's inver inversely proportional to the width W of the bar and directly proportional to the length L of the bar. So now that we have determined um, or we have written down the expressions for determining uh, rho x y and rho x x, we can move on to the second part, which concerns the determination of the electron density um, from the Hall effect. And for this we we go back to the um, classical Druid transport in a two-dimensional system and we recall that um, in the Hall effect um, the longitudinal, um, I'm sorry, the Hall uh, resistivity is inversely proportional to the charge carrier density and linearly proportional to the magnetic field. So Trude tells us that rho xy is given by V divided by the magnetic field divided by the elementary charge E and the density, which now here I will call NH, the H meaning Hall. So what we have to do is we have to look in this um, figure and we have to constrain ourselves to the region where um, rho xy is directly proportional to B. So this gives a, um, a line with um, a, a linear relation, right, corresponding to this region over here. Um, above a certain magnetic field, we see that um, there is a deviation from the simple linear dependence because um, there are some sort of oscillations um, in rho xy. So therefore, we constrain ourselves to this region over here where rho xy is strictly um, linear, linearly proportional to b. 
and we determine the density um, simply by taking the derivative or the slope, uh, if you want, of this line and just inserting it into this expression. So here we have just solved for the density um, and this expression here is just the slope of this line or equivalently just rho xy divided by the magnetic field. Um, so we could take two points here along this line, say at one kilo ohm and read off the corresponding magnetic field. Then we could take, say, the um, a resistivity of 0 0.5 kilo ohm and again read off the magnetic field. And from this we could determine the slope of this line. And then if we take 1 over the slope multiplied by the elementary charge, we obtain the density of the two-dimensional electron gas. And if we do that and plug in the numbers, we see that we see that NH, the density as determined from the classical Hall effect, is around 4.7 times 10 to the power of 11 electrons per centimeter squared. Right, now moving on, we want to calculate the electron density in a different way by using the shubnikov Haas oscillations. The shubnikov Haas oscillations are what you see here and the longitudinal resistivity because you s clearly see that the longitudinal resistivity at low magnetic fields, it behaves more or less as um, described um, in the classical Druda transport theory. So it's more or less independent of magnetic field, more or less constant. But then there are in a, at higher magnetic fields, starting slightly below one Tesla, um, the longitudinal resistivity begins to oscillate. And these oscillations are um, not a classical effect, they are a quantum mechanical effect and they arise um, due to the formation of Landau levels in the perpendicular magnetic field. And these Landau levels, they lead to a density of, stage, uh, density of states which oscillates as a function of magnetic field. And this density of states, these oscillations, they are um, periodic in 1 over b. So they're not periodic in the magnetic field. So if we look at these minima say they are not equidistant in magnetic field, but if we were to plot this rho xx as a function of the inverse magnetic field, then we would see um, that they are periodic in it. So the periodicity of the density of states is in the inverse magnetic field, 1 over b, and minima in the longitudinal resistivity, so in rho xx, they occur due to minima in the density of states at the Fermi energy. So what we're seeing here, whenever rho xx is a minimum, is essentially that and we know that at that magnetic field, um, in, the, in the minimum, that the density of states has a minimum. And since the density of states um, is periodic in 1 over b, rho xx is also periodic in 1 over b. And this phenomenon uh, is called the shubnikov Haas effect. And at low magnetic fields, it's um, well described by the Ando formula. So the Ando formula, which I'm not going to reproduce here fully, and which is valid when omega c tau q is much larger than 1, meaning um, in low magnetic fields, since this is the cyclotron frequency which is directly proportional to the magnetic field. The Ando formula tells us that the oscillations in the longitudinal resistivity rho xx are proportional to the cosine of 2 pi times Planck's constant h times the density of the electrons divided by 2 times the elementary charge E and the magnetic field. So as already mentioned, we, we see again that the resistivity is um, periodic in 1 over b, since the b here is in the denominator and not in the numerator. And we also see that this expression paves the way 
for the de determination of the electron density from these oscillations. What we have to do is, we have to find the period in 1 over b. So, what we want to do is we want to find delta 1 over b, which is, and now I'll explain what this means. So we have to find the period in 1 over b. So what we do is we look where rho xx has minima and then we have to take the inverse of that magnetic field and we have to subtract two such values since we're looking for the period. So what this means in effect is that we go here to the minimum and see which magnetic field this minimum corresponds to. Here it's around 1.8 tesla. So, delta 1 over b is given by 1 over 1.8 tesla minus, and then we go to a neighboring minimum, it could be this one, or it could be this one, here we will take this one, and we look at which magnetic field it occurs, it occurs at around 2.2 tesla, so we have to invert that, which gives us 1 over 2.2 tesla. So 1 divided by 1.8 tesla minus 1 divided by 2.2 tesla gives us the period in the inverse magnetic field 1 over b. And this gives around 0 0.1 um, times tesla, times the um, divided by 1 tesla. So now that we've determined the period in 1 over b, we see that this period is directly proportional if we just consider this, this is just rewriting this, this um, periodicity in a different way, we see that it's described by twice the elementary charge divided by Planck's constant and the density. So it follows from this that the density of the two-dimensional electron gas as determined from the shubnikov tahas oscillations is just twice the elementary charge divided by Planck's constant and this period which we just calculated. And so if we plug the numbers in we get that the density is around 4.8 times 10 to the 11 electrons per centimeter squared which is in very good agreement with the value we found previously from the Hall effect. Finally, we would like to we would like to estimate the mobility of the sample. And for the estimation of the mobility, we again concentrate on the low magnetic field limit, so before uh, the start of any oscillations, and we recall that in Judas theory the mobility is given by the Trude mobility is given by 1 over the elementary charge E times the electron density times the longitudinal resistivity rho xx at zero magnetic field. So what we have to do is we already know the density because we can use either this one or this one, it doesn't matter, they're both pretty much the same. And then for rho xx at v equals zero, we just have to read off this value. And just keep in mind that um, this is rho xx multiplied by a factor of five just for the purpose of plotting both curves um, in one figure. So here we have around 1.5 kilo ohm divided by 5, that gives us around 300 ohm. So rho xx at the magnetic field B equals 0 is around 300 ohm. And if we plug the numbers in, we get that the mobility is around 40,000 centimeters squared per volt second.
that's pretty much it concerning this uh, exercise problem. So what we've seen is um, something which is very um, very often done in experiments to characterize um, uh, two-dimensional uh, two systems, be it either systems containing uh, consisting of electrons or holes, and that is to use such a hole bar geometry and to measure the longitudinal and hall voltages in a magnetic field in order to then determine the longitudinal and hall resistivities which allow one to estimate the density in two different ways. Once at low magnetic fields uh, using the slope, the inverse slope of, um, of this line which is rho xy or um, we can estimate the density from the periodicity of the Shubnikov Tahas effect. The mobility is best estimated um, by um, using the density and the longitudinal resistivity at zero magnetic field.